Hello guys and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Today we got a pretty unique opportunity to try out the just released and brand new Sapphire R9380X Nitro graphics card, which comes in as a completely new model in the AMD's 300 series lineup. Yes, finally something new from AMD, but more on that later on. As you can see the product box is practically the same as the also Sapphire's R7370 and R7360 Nitro models, which we just recently reviewed, with vertical box orientation, showing off some main features on the bottom, like 4GB of video memory, factory overclock GPU, and a highlighted notion which tells you that this model carries a backplate. On the right side of the box you'll find system requirements and some basic specifications listed out, while the back side reveals some talk about the Nitro and R9-380X series in general, and two pictures of the graphics card with pointed out features. Opening up the box, here we have some user manuals, quick start guide and optical disk with drivers and software. a DVA to VGA adapter and that's basically it for the bundle. And here's the graphics card itself. This Sapphire's R9380X carries that typical nitro looking cooler design, which we actually really like aesthetic wise on account of its simple design, good quality build and subtle details. Most of the outer shell is made out of plastic with some metal bits and in comparison to the R7360 or the R7370, this model is expectedly a bit beefier. Beside the big chunk of aluminium heatsink, this model also carries four thick heat pipes which run through the copper GPU base, pulling the heat off of it. In addition to them, we have two pretty large 100mm fans which are turned off when the card is in idle and under certain temperatures, thanks to the Sapphire's intelligent fan control technology. Helping to this cooling cause with its heat dissipation capabilities, we also have the already mentioned backplate on the opposite side of the graphics card, which carries this nice looking pattern together with the Sapphire's logo on it, and of course which makes the card more rigid. Power for the card comes through two 6-pin PCI Express power connectors on the top back portion of it, while on the other end on that same side you'll see a small toggle switch for going between two BIOS. Thanks to the updated AMD's GCN 1.2 architecture, you won't have to use any external Crossfire bridge connection to make a multi-GPU setup possible. Last but not least, for video output connections, you'll get one DisplayPort, one HDMI, one DVI-D and one DVI-I. So, what kind of sorcery is hidden beneath that cooler? What we have here is a somewhat new GPU based as we just mentioned on the new GCN 1.2 architecture, which in this variation wasn't used anywhere before. You could say that it's an upgraded version of the Tahiti XT chip, carrying over some of the new features that come with the GCN 1.2 architecture. On the other hand, this particular model and its background comes from the Tonga GPU, and basically what R9380X carries is a fully unlocked version of that chip. You can call it the Tonga XT, while the R9285 and the R9380 are Tonga Pro. In comparison to them, the R9380X carries 256 stream processors more, 2048 in total to be precise. Here we also have 128 textural units and 32 ROPs, 4GB of video memory with 256-bit memory bus. The reference GPU clock speed is claimed at 970 MHz, but since we have the Sapphire's Nitro version of the R9380X, we didn't get that exact figure, but rather a factory overclocked one, which is going just over the 1 GHz mark, while the memory is rock solid at 1500 MHz. All in all, when you reach for a conclusion, you can see that this card and its series is meant to fill in the price and performance gap between the regular R9380 and the R9390. This is one of the reasons why you'll see a R9390 in our benchmarking result charts, just so we can check out how far it runs away from its smaller brother. Installing the card onto our testing rig and taking a good part of the day aside so we can play with it, as you can see performance wise the 1080p resolution and the 1200p for that matter didn't represent any problem for the R9380X. It actually leans more towards the 1440p resolution with its high FPS output and 4GB of VRAM, while in our case we stretched it even further with the use of 1600p resolution. 
performance gap between it and the R9 390 is still pretty decent, in a way it would justify its purchase in case you need even more performance than the R9 380X can deliver. All in all with the R9 380X we got ourselves a series which will tier to 1080p resolution if you need way more than 60fps or if you are in search for a 1440p capable graphics card which will smoothly run your games. Temperature wise under Firmax stress test load, with this card we were going just slightly over 70 degrees Celsius, but during games it was usually below that mark. Idle temperatures roam around 40 degrees Celsius, which is pretty decent since the card is running passive without fans working. The card was pretty quiet under load, you will hear it, but not in a way it will be annoying, just fans making wind noise. Maybe the best thing about it lies in the fact that it didn't emit any coil wind whatsoever, even under fur mark and 3D mark, which is actually quite impressive and we don't know if we got lucky with this sample or Sephar did a really good job with the power design. Thank you once again guys for checking out our unboxing and review of the Sapphire's R9 380X Nitro graphics card. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to our Tactic YouTube channel or you can check out our other videos from before.